So I wish I could be attending so many things simultaneously, but unfortunately, I'm one person. I can't attend everything at the same time and cater to huge volumes as uh, uh, Dr. Gurwar Reddy said. You are the cause, you are the effect, you are the hero, you are the champion, you are the boss, you are the best, you are the greatest, and nobody can be you. So take it from me, you are the best counselor, there's no doubt, but you are the bottleneck. And one should not be the bottleneck because your time has to be given to as many people as possible with the patient's satisfaction. And this talk is dedicated towards bringing this on. So a timeline, as uh, Dr. Gurwa Reddy has already said, say about 15 minutes on the lower side and 30 minutes for a surgical patient would be the time that would be required for every patient. So if you are a standalone doctor, and you have 20 patients, it would take five hours approximately. But in addition, but in case you have a counselor with you, you can do that exactly in half, half the time, giving greater patient satisfaction, covering more patients in the same time, and higher OPD to surgery conversion. And that is what we are looking for. So who is a counselor? From my side, I'm not looking at definitions given on the net or the dictionary. It's a person who knows the complete picture of the disease and can convert scientific knowledge into simple layman's knowledge and connect with the patient. So what are the skills that a counselor should have? Of course, most of them have already been alluded to, so I would not repeat. But I would say problem solving and an attitude to help the patient, that should be an integral part. And I would insist that they learn photography, they should be IT efficient so that uh, they can communicate with the patient on the phone and everything. And I have a team of counselors, never have only one counselor. And then once they start realizing the importance, they are always asking for a raise in the salary to unimaginable amount. So having more numbers is helpful there. So how do we train our counselors? First of all, they have to know everything about the hospital. Where is the laboratory? What is, where is the ward? What sort of wards? What are two rooms, one rooms? They should, they are taken to the operation theater. They see a few procedures so they can appreciate what's happening. They have to have a complete understanding of uh, most of the things. Now in my place, the CT scan and uh, the patient has to go out of the building to for the CT and MR centers or for the physiotherapy. So they are physically taken to each center so that when they are explaining to the patient where to go for a CT or a MR, uh, um, um, an examination, they can explain it better. They have to be trained to be accessible for patients' queries over calls and even on WhatsApp. They should be trained to, I use them to train, uh, I train them to maintain patient records, clinical pictures, so they help me to form folders where all the record keeping goes and it is done by the counselor himself. They should be well versed with the philosophy of the surgeon. This is very important because <clears throat> the, the basic philosophy, um, if it is in, in line with what the surgeon has taught the counselor, it makes a very big difference in converting. So everyone is on the same page when they're talking to the, to, the, uh, to the patient and they should be, of course, they should visit the patient post-operatively as well. So that adds to their confidence when they come next time. Now I tell my counselors, do not let me talk. You do most of the talking. So in that phase, they take over the conversation and I will show you a video how this is done. Ensure all patient questions have been answered. 
the the counselors are told that they should be happy with all the face time they have think from the patient's point of view use the same language and the patient's perception of the treatment should be absolutely five star so basically um, they are asked to establish a relationship because when you are a counselor many of these points are not required but when there is a second person who is doing the counseling in that situation we go through a lot of points and um, all the questions that have been um, that are raised by the patient should be answered and communication is the key so that again is taught as dr shantanu say look in the eye um, be very very polite and talk about everything so what is the diagnosis so this is all what the counselor does rather than me doing that would save me a lot of time as dr gurwa reddy said if you have a very robust backup of counselors registrars senior registrars who are looking after the problem is the quality of the registrar and senior registrar keeps on changing maybe gurwa reddy is in a in a hospital and has a center where he attracts the best of the best but there are a lot lot of questions that the patient has um, when will I, will i sit when can i travel when i can go back to work so before the patient asks these questions the counselor should address as um, from uh, as a um, from be before itself and uh, before the patient asks the counselor should have answered all these queries that he anticipates from the patient so everything under the sun should be talked by the counselor and then we have a helper workflow to manage the time now this is a topic this uh, one or two slides are away from the basic topic i have been given but it's basically time management in the opd so the helper or the counselor whoever it is he first opens the door welcomes the patient settles the patient onto the uh, examining table Uh, opens the patient's record on the computer he sequences the patient's report and places x-ray scans on the view box and stands ready next to the patient couch for clinical examination and evaluation from the surgeon side so at this point i come in now after i go then the the the, the patient is help of the couch onto it on to a chair he listens he has listened to all the doctor's instructions keeps the wheelchair ready to shift out keeps the reception informed about the next patient to be queued and escorts the patient to the out to the post consultation and assists the patient in the follow up appointment as well so counselor is not restricted ki acha bahar jana wo apni appointment next le lena the counselor goes so the patient feels very comfortable he is not finding for a place now this should be as smooth as an orchestra the opd should run very smoothly there should not be haphazard things happening here and there as has already been alluded to the counselor takes the telephones of the consultant and answers to the because 80 85% of the of the uh, questions on a telephone to the consultant are things that even the counselor can answer or he can ask a long question with the which is a word one word answer for the consultant and then the counselor talks on the telephone for another 2 minutes 3 minutes whatever the time is required we usually run a number of cabins and dressing areas so we have a light system so you can see inside the opd chamber there is there are four lights can be seen outside the chamber again four lights can be seen and those lights are connected to the reception desk and each light it 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 is an indication for some things say for example a patient is waiting for the consultant or a stretcher is required or a wheelchair is required or there is a problem and send in water because someone is crying and you want water sent in so everything is coded nothing is the patient doesn't come to know how things are happening but the wheelchair comes in automatically when the light is on and the light is switched on by the counselor the moment he say sees that the examination is over so that waiting for the stretcher waiting for the 
um, for anything to happen, um, that time is saved. So the main keyword, if I have to say, is anticipate. Now we have a very um, uh, comfortable waiting room on one side, but you see the picture on your right hand side. This is a back lobby that goes behind the consulting rooms and you can walk into any consulting room from here. Now, this, is, this has to be in the infrastructure planning. So when you have, uh, if you are in cabin number four, normally people have a door between their two cabins and they have to walk through the cabin. You walk to into a cabin and the patient says, sir, I have a lot of time for my children's school ka time hai, or whatever. And you want to go to another cabin or you want to go and see a dressing. So this allows you to jump into from one cabin, supposing there is a patient who's creating a lot of ruckus and you want to jump two cabins and go to that cabin to control the situation. So that is a part of the infrastructure planning if you have a chance. So anticipate, as I said, and this is a small video. Uh, I will, please excuse me for some um, grammatical mistakes in the written. And this is me examining a patient of avascular necrosis of the, so now this is the counselor. I make him sit on my chair to give him the importance. I introduce the counselor to the, to the patient and say, he will explain you everything and please feel free to ask whatever you want to ask. Now, this is the counselor who's taking you to what is avascular necrosis. He tells you what a total ape is. He tells that the femoral head has been removed. The femur has been implanted. That's the acetabular side. Finally, he comes to the complications. This is a page of hip fractures. So he says, what are the neurovascular problems, infections, the benefits and everything. And finally, after this, he comes to the costing. The costing is talked only if the patient asks because some patients feel they are very rich. They should not talk about costs, but usually patients, what does it, what would the cost entail? So he takes it through every room, the general ward, the special room, and he keeps on underlining and says that the medicine cost is not included. This is where I come back again. I have seen two more patients in the meanwhile. And then I ask, if there is any other question you want me to answer, I will be very happy to, um, to please feel free if there are doubts that, I have not, that have not been cleared. So I wait there and I answer the rest of the questions. Because one of the problems with the counselor is patients want you. They don't want the counselor. As Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Carve said that um, people have come for you. They have not come for the counselor. That's perfectly right. But somewhere you, because the bottleneck has to be broken. So I think with this, I would end my talk uh, thanking the organizers for this very excellent, interesting, um, odd topic uh, for which I have been invited. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv Rai. Though it was an odd topic, but that was a fantastic scientific deliberation. So it was, it was wonderful to learn all those great tips. And the first thing I'm going to have is uh, to come to your city and to see your field of counselors. Thank you so much. Now, I would, yeah. one thing, I, I would add one or two little things. Number yeah, one, yeah. it takes six to nine months to, to train a good counselor. Yes, absolutely. So a lot of patience is required because they have to learn. Most of them are not doctors. My, my place, I have, don't have doctors because if I get a doctor, they want to earn more. So either they would leave me or I would not be able to afford them. Then they start grumbling. So I usually prefer, and um, this is a do number ki baat, ki I prefer um, uh, usually ladies who are either widows or they are divorcees so that they don't have functions every day. Ki achha, aad meri saas problem, problem. So chutiyan, utiyan, wo kam kare. that's do number ki baat again. I know everything is being recorded and people can see it even two years from today or 10 years from today and can catch me for this. But I think probably selecting your counselor is extremely important. I, they are trained to speak the same words, the same language, the same 
uh, train of thoughts in the same tone. So actually we call them parrots. So you have parrot number one, parrot number two, parrot number three, and the parrot would say, and I would say, okay, THR. So the parrot would go on reciting the same thing. Because what I've learned is whatever you have to repeatedly say, because speaking takes away a lot of energy. And now when, as your age increases, you're not interested in spending so much of time speaking, that's number one. Although you are enthusiastic, but even then you get exhausted talking, talking, talking. So it's always nice to have someone else do the same thing. Thank you.